Okay, my head does not fit on the screen. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Claire and you are watching another episode of my cake chemistry series, the one where I talk all about the science behind baking and a whole load of other things. If you're enjoying these videos so far, please do remember to give them a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications button so that you don't miss any of the latest updates from me. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please do pop them in the comments below or come and say hello to me over on Instagram. I recently shared the recipe for my classic Victoria sponge cake, which I use for most of the cakes that I do. If you want to go and check out that video, I will link it in the description below. But in it, I briefly mentioned how I use the creaming method as my preferred way of mixing. This is a very traditional method that is most commonly used by many other bakers out there, but there are other ways of combining our ingredients. And that is what I thought I would discuss today since a lot of people have asked me what the difference is. In a nutshell, the creaming method involves beating together our softened fat, normally butter or margarine, with sugar until it is light in colour and has increased in volume. This adds air bubbles into the mixture and also helps to dissolve some of the sugar granules before it enters the oven. The eggs are then beaten in one at a time and then finally the flour is sifted and then folded through the mixture carefully until it's smooth and there are no lumps left. The all-in-one method is slightly different in that all the ingredients are combined at the same time and then beaten until smooth. Does using either one of these methods affect the final result? Yes, although the difference will be very small if the same ingredients and quantities have been used. Generally the creaming method will produce a lighter area and softer sponge than the all-in-one simply because of the additional air bubbles that have been incorporated during the mixing process. However, if you were to make two cakes with each different method and compare them side by side, most people probably aren't going to be able to tell which is which. There are of course many other cake mixing methods and the one that you use will depend on the type of cake you're making and the ingredients involved. So I'm gonna go over the top five now, although it would be seven in total, including creaming and all in one. But let's quickly go through them. The first is the sponge or whipping method. So this is where we take our eggs, either whole eggs or simply just the yolks, and we whisk them with our sugar until they're really light and thick. Then we'll very, very carefully fold through our sifted flour. Um, we don't wanna knock any of the air out at this stage. Sometimes right at the end, a little bit of melted butter is also folded through just to give a slightly richer cake that is a little bit more moist and has a longer shelf life. The second is the foam or angel food cake method. This is similar to the last one, although we're actually only using the egg whites this time. They are whisked with our sugar until soft peaks are formed, a little bit as if you were going to make a meringue. And then once again, the sifted flour is folded through. These cakes are extremely light and airy, probably the lightest of them all, which is why they're often called angel food cakes. And they also are pretty stable because egg whites are a structure builder. However, they generally have a very short shelf life because of the absence of fat. And the third is the one stage or blended method. This is where we sift together all of our dry ingredients, add our wet ingredients and mix everything together until combined. It really is as simple as that. These cakes are generally made with oil or some other kind of liquid fat and tend to be very moist. Carrot cake is probably one of the most well-known cakes that is made using this method. 
The fourth is the rubbing method. This is a lot less commonly used for cakes. We tend to see it more in recipes for pastries, biscuits and baked goods like scones for example. However, there are some quick bread and loaf cake recipes that use this method. That is rubbing in our solid fat into the flour, normally butter, until it resembles breadcrumbs, then gradually stirring through any liquids before baking. And finally, the fifth one, and I admit I have never used this technique before, it is the two-stage or paste method, which is also sometimes known as the reverse creaming method. Sounds interesting. What we do is we take our dry ingredients, like our flour, and then beat in our softened fat, which is normally our butter or margarine. Then any liquids are added, such as milk, and then finally we beat in our eggs before baking. I would never think to make a cake like this, and I see why it's called the reverse creaming method because it kind of seems like it's backwards. However, I would be very keen to try it. From what I've learnt, adding the butter to the flour in the first stage coats the flour particles in a layer of fat, which delays the formation of gluten, a structure builder. The mixture will be slightly thicker. The end result will be a sturdier cake that has a slightly tighter crumb, so much easier for slicing, shaping, things like that. But yet it's still very soft and moist. My cakes tend to be very light and moist, which is great taste-wise, however, they can be difficult to work with at times, so I'm certainly interested to have a go at trying out some different methods. So let me know, have you ever tried any of these cake making techniques yourself? And which one is your favorite? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope it was helpful and I will see you again next week. Bye.